right, let's go over objectives for this video. Number one, we're going to go over common misconceptions for image questions. Number two, we're going to do real student analysis on a CDSC image question. Number three, we're going to have an in-depth question breakdown of the CVSC question. Number four, what to focus on for generally for all image questions. Number five, effectively choose an answer using image with clinical picture. Hey, future doctors, Dr. Daniel Wynn here. Let's talk about some of the misconceptions with image questions for USMLE. Number one, one of the common misconceptions is you get so tunneled vision into looking at the image that you forget to correlate that image with the clinical scenario, meaning that you're trying to base your answer solely on the image or what you believe you see in the image, whether that's a chest x-ray, whether that's histology, whether it's a CT scan, MRI, you guys get the idea. So we're going to talk about kind of how to navigate adding image with clinical settings to be able to get your correct answer choice. Second huge misconception is that reading into the image way too much. So what does that mean? So not looking at the main thing that's wrong, but maybe you're looking at the peripheral, the image, looking at specs on a chest x-ray or a CT scan that looks a little bit odd on the very, very far into the screen. Most of your issues, for the most part, whether it's histology or whatever image you're looking at, what they want you to focus on is in the middle of the screen. They're, they're not wanting you to be a pathologist or a radiologist. They're really trying to say, can you get the big picture, right? Can you understand the image on a whole and correlate that to the clinical picture? And the last misconception is you know, you have to use the image to get the question correct. That's not always the case. A lot of the times, if you work through the question clinically, the image is only as a supplement to help you get the answer correct. But a lot of the times you don't even need the image if you look through the question uh, clinically and be able to work through it that way. All right, let's get into the question breakdown with one of my real students that I tutor on an image question that we went over on a CVSC. Okay. Work me through this here. Tell me how you got <clears throat> pancreas here. Um, so I think it was more of uh, probably a buzzword. I uh, obviously I was between pancreas and spleen. So let me okay. see. Let me just reread this one. I didn't. I didn't. I haven't broken down this. I kind of like. I knew this question would take more kind of time to go back and see their explanation. So I kind of moved on from it, but. It said, uh, after a sudden loss of tearing chest pain that radiates to the back, uh, he smokes cigarettes, high blood pressure, and then they showed the images of the chest and abdomen, uh, confirmed thoracic abdominal dissection of the aorta. Uh, Press, which is the following. So I think my train of thought was I saw chest pain that radiates to the back. I feel like that's kind of a buzzword that it's uh it kind of keys you in on pancreas and uh with its location and the image on the left, I saw uh liver spleen and kind of I guess I you don't really see pancreas that yeah. much. Yeah. But um, I mean, obviously, my my MRI radiology uh, imaging technique, I mean, like my exposure to them isn't as heavy as a, as a medical student. But um, yeah, no, and that's I, OK. No, I, I definitely for sure I get where you kind of go with actually these two answer choices are not bad to get into. So I'm going to say that I like where you're going with the clinical aspect. Right. Because, yeah, I mean. But, you know, I guess my, my, my caveat is what also gives you, you know, chest pain that radiates to your back? Aortic dissection, right? You know what I'm trying to say? Confirm direct dissection of the aorta. Okay, yeah. So when you have an and, aortic well, I will say, I, I will say the I will say the other concept I was thinking of is obviously the thoracoabdominal dissection aorta and like if there was like some abdominal aorta dissection and maybe like SMA or IMA could have been involved and like kind of related to that path but I couldn't think of like that concept 
Like, sure. you know, like I know SMA, I start kind of thinking of like the third part of the duodenum and then SMA, I think of uh, nutcracker syndrome. Uh, and then IMA, I think is like an L3. I don't really know, you know, what else would be affected by it. But then, you know, they showed that location in the image on the left where it's like right up in front of it. So in my mind, I'm like, maybe that is like an artery coming off of it. Um, or I guess, like you said, it's probably it might be the... I, I thought it was interesting in the image on the left, how there's like a, a line kind of through that. Yeah, that yeah. thing. And so I don't know if that kind of maybe was from the dissection of it. Yeah. But um, yeah. I was kind of thinking of all that stuff, but I couldn't pinpoint it to a concept that I felt comfortable with. So I just stuck with what I knew about what radiates to the back, pick pancreas, and just didn't overthink it. Sure, but sure. That's just because okay. I, I you know, Yeah. Yeah, yeah, no, definitely for sure. Uh, you know, I, I'm okay with kind of how you're thinking. Okay, this is how I would have worked through this, right? So, you know, they give you the diagnosis, right? It's an abdominal dissection of the aorta, right? And if you take a look at the MRI, right there, like you said, there's a line. I always say when you look at images, try to look at the most obvious thing, and there's a line through the aorta, which you know they already gave you this aorta dissection, and then you try to look. You know, they're asking you, okay, so occlusion of this vessel would most likely compromise. So it's a, you know, it's a abdominal branch off the aorta, okay? And I'm gonna be with you here, Tris, uh, and say like, you know, I'm not. I'm not great with my, you know, um, thoracic abdominal, right. Uh, you know, thoracal abdominal aorta. Right. I mean, you know, when's the last time I remember that? I don't remember a lot of it, but if you look at kind of this MRI scan, right. Um, you take a look at here, right. Actually, is this, I think this might be, no, this is a CT scan actually. Um, I'm pretty sure. Right. Yeah. It's a CT scan. Okay. So the reason why I know CT scan is the bone is highlighted, but anyway, so you have your liver, right. You have your liver here. Okay. What is this right here? Do you know? Um, no. So this could be your duodenum, part of your intestines, right? Because it has a lumen. Okay. In okay. And then what is this right here? That's your spleen, right? Yeah, that's your spleen. Okay. So keeping it simple, right? Because this is a sagittal cut, meaning you're looking from the side. I mean, you can use that if you want. Um, but in my mind, right, you know that they're going to point to an arterial level or a branch coming off the abdominal aorta on this, you know, on this screen or this level. So you're already thinking, okay, so you should be thinking, all right, is, is it the liver, the spleen, the duodenum? And so if you look at here, right, um, you know, you're probably your best answer here is going to be your spleen because it's on this level. There's no liver, right? And I always say, you know, when they're testing these images, they, they just want you to see the big picture. You get what I'm saying? They're not going to ask you what's this. They're not going to ask you, you know, this, right? They're, they're only trying to get you to look at the big picture things. So, yeah, I guess if they wanted pancreas, they put it maybe would have drawn it in. Uh, yeah, exactly. Maybe. Exactly. Exactly. They'll put it in a little bit lower and things like that. All right. Let's get down into the question breakdown. So number one, we got to read the question first. Number two, read the answer choices. Number three, read the case and highlight. Number four, images and labs. Number five, pick your gut answer choice. So we got a 65-year-old male brought to the emergency department, 30 minutes after a sudden onset of tearing in the chest pain that radiates to his back. So just imagine an older gentleman, back pain here, acute issues, which brought him to the emergency department. So he smoked one pack of cigarettes for daily for 40 years. So ton of ton of smoking, which is a risk factor here. Pulse is 115, blood pressure is 170 or 110. So he is very uh, tachycardic. And then he has hypertension, which are also risk factors for certain diseases. Keep that in mind. And then you have physical exam and chest x-ray show no abnormalities, contrast axial and uh, sagittal right chest and abdomen show uh, thoracal abdominal dissection of the aorta. And the arrows indicate the vessels perfused by the false lumen. Okay. And then we have this little diagram that I included here showing kind of what is the nature or how does it look for dissection of any kind of vessel here um, from normal to dissection to the right. And then you got your risk factors for aorta dissection, smoking, age, male, hypertension. So this guy has it all. Um, so we already know that, 
you know, the diagnosis there or give it to us. But, you know, the question is going to be compromised blood flow to which of the following organs. And then, of course, the diagnosis, thoracoabdominal dissection. So let's take a look at the images now, which is going to be very important here. So you have an axial CT scan on the left and a sagittal CT scan on the right with IV contrast. So you have the liver here. You have your spleen. You have your stomach here. You have your aorta. You have your uh, ver vertebra and your inferior vena cava, your aorta here, celiac branch, and then you have your SMA. So liver, of course, there too. All right. So kind of taking a look at everything, your answer is going to be spleen here. And that's due to the fact that best answer here with the level that it shows the spleen, even if you didn't know, is celiac branch that gives the vessel to the spleen. This is going to be your best. The other answer choices are not including your cross sections. And of course, you already have your diagnosis. So E is going to be your best answer choice here. All right, Dr. Wynn back again. Let's talk about a little bit of some generalizations that you can use that are high yield for all image questions, whether it's a CT scan, x-ray, uh, pathology slide, whatever it is. So always, always, always think about the patient clinically in the case. Okay, Half, the answer choice has to be related to the patient clinically, regardless of what you think of the image. Okay, number two, when you take a look at the image, really, really focus on what's in the middle of the image. That's going to be kind of where they're quizzing you or thinking, you know, um, getting you to look at the image and figure out what you need to know from there. Um, number three, right, relate that image back to the clinical scenario of the patient. And number four, um, don't always depend on the image as your only source of information. A lot of the times you can get the answer choice correctly without the image. Of course, that CBSC question is not a great example of that because you definitely needed the image to get the question correct there, but a lot of times you don't. So just remember, ask yourself, do you really need that image? Yes or no? So those are some of four high yield things that you can use for every image question. All right, high yield takeaways in less than 30 seconds here. So number one, Always, always, always start with your first five steps, regardless of question. Number two, imagine the patient clinically. That'll help you a lot. Number three, commit to a diagnosis. So key here. Number four, relate image to the clinical case. Number five, pick the best answer choice. And that's going to be kind of your high yield takeaways in less than 30 seconds here.